ready. Hello, how are you? I am Nikita and this is Yanni Talk. This is a podcast for women, by women, where we discuss our hopes, our desires, our dreams. We talk about finances, relationships. I mean, uh, the gamut, all of health, all the things uh, on this podcast. I thank you so much for joining. If you've been watching the podcast, thank you for watching. If you've subscribed already, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Greatly appreciate it. If you have not done all of the above, then please be sure to like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when a new episode of the Yanni Talk podcast is available. And of course, the Yanni Talk podcast is housed on the Just You Soap Company. YouTube channel and who's sponsoring today's episode? Just You Soap Company. Just You Soap Company is a natural bath and body product company with every product made just for you. Every product is nourishing, moisturizing, and it also feeds your skin. So totally important. While you're taking care of the inside, let Just You Soap Company take care of the outside. We've got body bars, facial bars, body butter, yanni bars, body oil, and beard oil and some other things too. So give us a try. Go to JustYouSoapCompany.com to place your order today. And I forgot to tell you about this. We are having a sale. If you use buy three, get one during checkout, you will get one item for free. That means that you buy three items and you use the code, then you can go back and get you one item for free. All right, all right, great. So now that that's out of the way, let us get started. You know, we don't we don't dawdle here. So we're gonna go ahead and get into today's episode. Today, we are talking to the phenomenal, the beautiful Terry Patterson. She is a former medical laboratory scientist. She has a master's in biomedical, bio molecular <laughs> science we're going to get her to pronounce that <laughs> too many syllables for me she is a women's empowerment author she's a six-figure entrepreneur she's a an award-winning international business coach and mentor and she is a licensed financial professional and and she is a mommy. She has a new baby. Too cute. She has some awesome kiddos. I'm totally excited about her being on today. So without further ado, I introduce to you Terry Patterson. Thank Yay! you. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Totally appreciate it. Do not take it for granted that you said yes. So I'm going to try not to hold you long so you can get back <laughs> to your family and do the thing, whatever it is that you need to do. Okay. All righty. Sounds <laughs> Thank good. Thank you again. So um, we're going to be talking about finances today. I think it is like really important um, that women have a grasp of what it is they need to do in regards to um, their finances. So I'm going to dive right in and start with this question. How do you start uh, financial planning? Right. So <clears throat> that's a good question. How do you even start? So I think um, one of the main things that you have to do to start the planning is, number one, just put yourself in the right mental state, knowing that um, you got to get vulnerable. And you might also be at a place where you might not be where you want to be. But at the same time, you have to start. And so just knowing that, giving yourself grace, I think is something that's very important in the beginning. And just knowing, you know, where you're starting is not necessarily where you're going to finish at. But just going ahead, giving yourself permission, being open with yourself so you can Mm -hmm. get yourself to where you want to be. I think that's really important to have that mindset. But once you start um, planning financially, Um, a couple of things that you're going to do. Number one, you kind of want, you want to put everything out on the table and it really just depends on what you're planning for. I guess that would be the first thing. What is the goal? Because everything is created around what it is you're really trying to do. That's how we help clients get to certain places and suggest things and recommend certain things. So it's really important for us to kind of know what the goal is, where we're trying to go. And then from there, we're able to look at the things that we really need to look at. And so once we kind of have a goal, um, Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, typically looking at your finances holistically, knowing exactly what's coming in, 
what exactly is going out. Those are going to be some of the main things that you're going to have to look at. And then at the same time, just depending upon what it is we're trying to do, you're going to have to either look at all your debt, have all your debt written out, you know, look at the interest rates on the debt. Um, Think about are there any um, future purchases that you plan on making, such as maybe is it in the, what's happening in the next one to three years? What about the next three to five, seven plus? Look at what's what are um, upcoming things that you are trying to do so you can get yourself on track to know, OK, I can start here. This is where I want to go. But I think, like I said, the main thing is knowing where you want to start, what you mm -hmm. want to do, and then being able to create a plan from there. But like I said, it can be, it just really depends upon, upon where you're at and what you're trying to do that the answer could go a lot of different places, but that's kind of a general start of what we look at, what's important, what are the priorities, and then make um, recommendations from that place. That's really good. You said something that made me think about uh, um, facing your fears when it comes to uh, finances. I'm reading a book currently uh, by Susie Orman, and that's one of the at the beginning of the book. That's what she talks about is, is facing your fear, going back to that point when uh, you started basically having a bad relationship with money. <laughs> right. So right. when you are are assisting people and I forgot to mention this I should have said this at the beginning <laughs> so um but I said in her in in Terry's bio that she is a, a financial professional so of course all of her information is going to be in the description box um but when you are assisting people with their financial planning is that something that you might get into about uh you know as you're talking to them and you realize there's some hesitation or there's some uh some trauma there, I guess I could say, in regards to finances. Do you ever stop and say, hold on, let's have another conversation? Have you, do you ever, do you do that? So, yeah, usually sometimes when people are being a little bit more hesitant, like you said, um, or kind of being reluctant, um, depending mm -hmm. upon what it is, I might ease them into the conversation. I might, you know, talk about my own struggles, maybe where I was at, what I'm used to seeing to let people know that you are not alone. Like anything that a person is going through, so many other people are either right there or have been through it as well. And it is perfectly mm -hmm. okay. And that's, that's why I'm here to help you, to help you to get yourself to where you want to be. So don't ever feel ashamed or feel like, you know, I don't, I don't want to disclose certain things or I'm just, you know, I'm not where I need to be. And it's perfectly okay. Because like you said, um, finances can be scary, but that's also because it's not really something really educated on in our country a lot of us are out here just winging it trying to do the best that we can so it's no fault to us for the way that we think about money and like the knowledge that we come um to the table with when we're trying to get help so that's that's an all-around encompassing feeling for most people that i sit with so i do definitely make sure i tell them that hey you are not the only one in this place we all were here hey, I was here. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm able to relate to them and just kind of share with them where I was at when I first really got into the financial industry and just let them know it's perfectly all right. But um, we're just going to start and then we're going to mm -hmm. we're going to get ourselves a plan to get to the final goal. You. Um, in part of starting, um, I have a two parter. So okay. one um, is family financial plan because you meant about um, basically not learning as kids. And that's something that, that's really uh, being talked about now is that that's something that needs to be taught in school, right? That maybe right. the thing that we're focusing on uh, as far as what kids are learning is maybe we need to change that. And we need to teach them about finances, balancing checkbooks and opening accounts and, you know, stocks and all these things. So do you think that um, it's, important or even imperative for people to start talking to their children about finances, like from when they're, even before they start school and up, you know, as a family, not just, you know, the mom talking to the kids, but like mom, dad, kids, if it's a two parent household, however the dynamic is, but having those conversations so that they understand. So they won't then, as I always say, go out into the world, <laughs> you know, with jacked up credit when you step out mm -hmm. into the world by yourself or messing it up. Do you feel like that's like really important? How do you do that? Right. So the thing about that question 
that it, it's good. But the thing of it is, most people don't have the education themselves to educate their children. So that's where the problem is going to lie. Yes, we can talk about and tell them that it's important. And there's certain things that you don't want to do. But that's the thing. A lot of us aren't educated on money. You know, most people in this country are financially illiterate, honestly. So mm -hmm. it's hard to want to talk about it at home unless us as the adult takes initiative to learn about it now ourselves. So I think mm -hmm. that we, number one, have to really learn about it. Or even if you can't remember it all or be able to, you know, explain it back to your family, find somebody that can and let them come in and talk to the family because somebody might get it better than the other. But at least can mm -hmm. they can also break down a couple things that you should at least, you know, be focusing on or thinking about. But I do think talking about finances at a young age is very, very important because, you know, a lot of times, speaking from my experience, you know, my parents, they talked about money in certain aspects of it for sure. Um, but it seemed the older that I got, the more, I guess, maybe mature they thought I would be with the conversation or what was going on or understanding it. That's mm -hmm. when there was more talks. But I wish that there was some other talks, you know, maybe I wouldn't have listened. Maybe I would have been hard headed. That's kind of what the assumption was. Right. But either way it goes. Um, I would have at least liked to have heard, hey, don't take out those loans in school or don't do certain things that I did. Mm -hmm. um, so now I could at least, you know, I would have heard it versus not hearing it and then having to live with the consequences. But for myself, um, my five older kids and I say older, the, the youngest of those is four. We do talk to them about money rules of money, things that I teach um, other adults, I talk to my kids about it because I want them to have heard it before. I want them to know how this works. Mm -hmm. I'm very open when it comes to money because I think a lot of times too, people people are going into the financial and I say financial world, meaning just being an adult completely kind of blindsided, don't really know is this actually a job that makes is this a good income? Therefore, you don't really know how to line up your bills. Like you have no mm -hmm. clue. You're just right, living right. in this. You know, when I graduate, I'm going to make this much money. Da, da, da. Like, mm -hmm. is that even realistic? Is that how it works? And so right. I am very, right. very open with my children when it comes to that, to where I tell them, hey, if this is what you want to do. This is what this income looks like. And because this is what this mm -hmm. income looks like, then I flip it back like, well, how much do you think certain bills cost and things like that? Right. And just try to get them to think about it at least to say, oh, well, at least you know that you heard it in this household before you went out there yourself. Because that's the thing. If no one's telling you, like I said, I just was oblivious. So I was like, when I graduate, right. I'm going to be making this much. And this is how my life is going to be. And I had to have a harsh reality with the real world. Like this is not the right. life that I thought was about to happen when I got out of school. <laughs> so yes, I think it is very important, um, but you can start with, with basic things. You can start with the importance of, you know, being debt free. Well, not gonna say being debt free. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just have a whole lot of debt that you can't afford. Like there's a place mm -hmm. that debt could be all right, but it's really about being able to afford it, being able to pay it off. Um, at the same time, the importance of saving. We mm -hmm. are horrible savers in this country. So that is one thing that I really am big on with my children when they do get money. Um, OK, how much of it we're putting in the checking side of your account? And then how much are you going to save? And so I always will talk to them about that because I want to create that habit that they understand that, you know, they need to pay themselves first and they need to always put money aside. Even when they get money, I don't care if you get five dollars. OK, are you going to put a dollar or 50 cents to the side? Because you need to put something to the side just so they get into that habit, because I think mm -hmm. that in itself will eliminate a lot of the things that we go through as adults um, if we had a stronger savings muscle for sure. That is really good. Uh, the savings and talking about debt, the difference between good debt and bad debt. Um, we didn't go that far. We did with the savings. But when our kids were in the house, that's something that I found to be very imper imperative was uh, teaching them how to budget. Mm -hmm. And like you say, you know, we asked them questions. What do you think, you know, the mortgages, what do you think? And their answers were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and so we realized we had to tell them, well, no, <laughs> you know, this is this is really what it is. And you like what you said, if you're bringing in this much and your bills are, are this much, then you can't go out and buy the four hundred dollar tennis shoes because <laughs> you don't even make it. You don't even have enough to cover, you know. So that was right. something that we did. Now, what they did once they got out, <laughs> that's something that 
only, but we did teach them. I printed off the budget sheets. I showed them how to do it. We did it together and all this stuff. So, you know, I don't know. And I always check in with them. Well, what about, I told you how to budget. I taught you how to budget. I've gave you the budget sheets. You need to send the link again so you can print it off. Right. So it, right. right. You can, because you said something, you can have the conversations and what they do when they get out there is one thing. But if you never have the conversation, they never have a piece of knowledge of it. It's one thing to know it and not do it. And it's something totally different not to know it because you don't even have anywhere to pull mm -hmm. from. You have nothing to fall back on. Very important. And now the other side of that with the family financial planning is what do you think that women should have their own um, financial plan separate from their husbands? Not a secret account per se, right. but in reading the book uh, and not even just reading the book, just knowing this in life. Right. Um, my parents um, separated when I was a nine and they both had a job. But when my father left, it got really hard. Right. But my mother had nothing in place. She had no plan. It was very devastating. And I think for women, uh, to me, it, it, you know, what, what do we need to do to ensure that just in case, not wanting to be divorced, not what, what, even if your husband passes away suddenly and you have nothing in place, what do you think that women need to do? Do you think women should have their own financial plan? And then if so, what should they do in that? especially when they're you know, married or in long-term relationships? Right. No, good question. Good question for sure. So, you know, for me, I think um, you should have multiple accounts. Now, I think that is it, it is important to have a joint account that where the bills are coming out of. You can have your own joint savings as well if there's like a goal that you guys have together. But I do think it is important for both individuals to have a, their own account as well to where there's money in there that you can do with whatever you want to do with it. So like, if you just want to save it for in case of an emergency, that's fine. If you wanted to spend it on some stuff that maybe you wanted to treat yourself with, that's fine. But because it's separate from the main necessities, nobody's going to be mad about it. Nobody's going to be saying anything. There's not going to be an argument. If there's enough money in the bill account that's paying on the bills, that's good. There's enough money going into savings. That's great. But then you have your own, like you said, but it doesn't have to be um, a secret or anything, but it's just sitting there in case of whenever something right. might happen. And so, you know, I think typically if we're speaking of the, the good relationship, then yes, it's known mm -hmm. about people knows what's going on and it's, it's, you know, it's just there, but everybody should be okay with that. Now, you know, if your relationship is a little bit different to where maybe you don't talk about it. Um, but I do mm -hmm. think it's important to have something set aside for yourself regardless, but also, you know, that, that turns into a whole nother topic. If you're having to do that, right. and there's some other things that we need to think about, but right. you do have to uh, plan. There's like anything in life, it takes a plan. So you do have to plan ahead, make sure you're going to be okay regardless. Um, but like I said, that's why I said this um, country as a whole, we don't do a good job with saving. And so we all mm -hmm. probably need to save way more than what we do. Therefore, in case of an emergency, in case something does happen, we have something to fall back on. And so that's kind of the way that I see it, the way that it makes um it eliminates a lot of drama that can happen. Having those joint accounts together, but at the same time, having accounts that are separate to where it's yours. And even if you have to separately your own checking in, your own saving, that's fine as well. So you can kind of decide what's going to be doing what. But having something I do think is important just because you never know what's going on. Um, you never know what's going to happen. And you always want to be prepared. And um like they say, if you um, stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And that's the thing. Right. You want to make sure you're properly <laughs> right. prepared for anything that could happen. And so definitely, um, I do think, though, that the work life is kind of changing in favor of women compared to what it was a long time ago to where women are becoming very successful in their careers, in their jobs, or getting to a place mm -hmm. to where they are making good money. To where now, yes, I can still be in my relationship, still do what I need to do. But at the same time, I still need to have something saved up or have something that I know in case something happens. A rainy day fund, regardless of what that rainy day is, still having something like that as well. Um, 
So that's what I definitely feel like that's very important, especially just really depending upon the nature of the relationship, what's going on, but just having that as a backup anyways, um, because typically if there's a split, like you said, it it would seem the woman typically is going to be the one, especially if there's kids involved, there's going to be a lot more load financially that typically comes on her. So just having extra stuff that you've been saving just in case something happens, I think that is very important um, as well. So, um, in regards to the burden, right? The load when something, when something, however, whatever it is, but it's devastating that happens. So, <clears throat> reading the book, and it's a really good book. I'll put the information about it in the description. I'm enjoying it. I picked it up before I started reading and put it down, but now I'm really reading it and getting some good stuff out of it. But <laughs> one of the things that I was reading, the section that I'm in now is about uh, wheels um, and some other things, but I'm reading it. The scenario she gave husband and uh, uh, I think his name is John. Her name is Mary. But anyway, they get married. She has a house. He moves into the house with her. They fix it up. Uh, she bought the house for whatever amount. Then the house was worth three hundred thousand dollars. She suddenly dies. She has cancer. She gets. She has cancer. She passes away. So then he stuck. He has the house. She had a will. She leaves. Uh, you know, says in the will that he gets the house and he's the guardian of the kids. Long story short, <laughs> there's not enough money for him to even do anything to for the probate for the house because he's not going to get the value of the house actually. Uh, then the mother-in-law is trying to get the kids. So he's got to get lawyers for that lawyers for the probate. At the end of the day, what she says is, uh, that a living trust is better than a will. I had, I've heard of the, of a trust, but I never heard of that before and did not even know that it was better than a will. <laughs> so could you talk to us about that? Because there are so many people, I think, we get this thing of people telling us, of course, have life insurance, right? And then, you know, have a will. But now I'm reading this book and it's like, <laughs> you may not need to get a will because you got to go through too many hoops. <laughs> so do you right. mind talking to us about that, about a living trust? And if you don't, and if you uh, would like to, we have the time, you could maybe touch a little bit on um, insur- life insurance, but go right, ahead, right. do your thing. Okay. <laughs> So, um, yes. So wills and trusts, um, the thing about them, the thing about a will, most people don't realize wills can also, um, be challenged in court. So just because, um, you have a will does not mean whatever you have in that will is not going to go to probate. And so even though you might have said this house is going to this person, the judge is still going to make the determining factor, which I think is crazy, but Mm -hmm. it's just kind of the will is supposed to be your plans and your wishes. It does not mean Mm -hmm. it has to happen like that. So that's the thing. Wills do not um, avoid probate. They can still be taken to probate. The thing about a trust is, though, trust is more so for your assets and your possessions and how Mm -hmm. you want them to be given or passed down. So if you're really thinking or talking more about assets and possessions, that would be more of a trust type of scenario that you need to have a trust. And so... Um, the thing about trust is they allow you to have a trustee that you get to decide if something passes. That's nothing. You can have it when you're still alive. So or you don't even have mm-hmm. to pass because you can have people borrowing money out of the trust or getting stuff from the trust while you're still alive. But you have somebody else that is overseeing it. And there's like a set amount of there's a set rules per se to how you have access to the money. So let's just say um, maybe there was a lot of cash in there. But there were stipulations that the cash could have passed down you like, you know, from somebody else Mm -hmm. um, to where you get the term, you know, the trust fund babies. But the money in the trust might say, Mm -hmm. hey, if you're going to start a business, then you can take some of this money. If you're going to go to college, Mm -hmm. you can take some of this money. It's not there to say, hey, if you want to buy a Lamborghini or Bugatti, you can just go and get it for that. No, it's going to have certain rules of how you can get to the money. But um or the assets, I'll say. And so mm-hmm. that's the same thing. So with the trust, you really, if you have assets that are passing down, houses, cars, money, businesses, no, you need to have a trust as well. You can still have a will that, you know, it's okay right. to have both, 
but don't just think if you have a will only, this is how things are going to play out. Because if you're building a legacy for your family, you're trying to lead generational wealth, you and your mind probably already have an idea of how you want that to be left or how you want them to access the funds or whatever it may be. And that can be done with a trust. It's going to be okay. better protected in a trust than it is going to be in a will. So going through probate too, you're going to still get hit all the fees, all the things can get, um, you know, mm -hmm. the taxes and all of that trust is going to give you a little bit more protection for sure. And so, like I said, if you have assets, homes, cars, anything you're trying to pass down, you should have a, a trust for sure. And then, so how do you, how, how does someone do that? How do they go through the process of uh, setting up a trust? Right. So with a trust, you're going to want to set that up with lawyers. Um, they're going to be estate planner lawyers because basically it's just like a huge contract to where it's mm -hmm. got, it's a legal contract. So that's why you want to have lawyers to help you create this, to make sure everything is the way that you want it to be. Um, and the ones that do it well. And so there, um, are different lawyers that do this. There are lawyers that, you know, that I work with that, um, sit down, they can do basic trust. And when I say basic, I just mean you might not have um, a lot of businesses and all these different things like that, but they can do the trust for like the everyday family that's going to possibly pass down a house or just different things like that. Um, money in your bank account, like things mm -hmm. like that, that you want to make sure is taken care of. So um, like I said, there's a set of lawyers that I work with that will sit down with families and help them figure out what's the one that they need. And then of course there's more advanced ones. If you have multiple businesses, a lot of different properties, a lot of things going on okay. to where they're able to determine which is best for you, but they are highly equipped. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, and this is all they do. So all they do is work and help people create and build their estate plans to make sure they are the exact way that you want them. They probably um, have ideas to tell you about some things you might not have thought mm -hmm. about to where they're there right. to help you through the process because it's hard to ask a question about something you know nothing about. You don't know right. what it should say. You don't know what you should do, but because this is what they do, they know how to check the boxes to make sure you've thought about this, you know this, just different things like that. And so, um, like I said, getting with an attorney for sure that does estate planning, um, that is going to be your best bet for a trust for sure. There's some ones, like I said, that I work with that I can refer, but at the same time, as long as somebody is an estate planning attorney, then that is um, who you're going to want to set your trust up with. Don't, this is not one of those things, in my opinion, you're trying to do it by yourself because right. yes, maybe it might save some money, but what if it's wrong? I mean, you're not mm -hmm. going to be here to have to really, you know, <laughs> typically you're not going to be here to have to deal with the mess, but your right. family would. Right. Um, right. Unless, and even if you were still alive and having to do, if you did something wrong and what if you messed up how the money can get access? Like, this is just something to me. I feel like let that be to the professional, let them mm -hmm. handle that and, you know, work with an attorney to get that estate um, plan set up or that trust set up the proper way. So um, they can explain everything as well to you to make sure you didn't miss any boxes when you were filling that out or figuring out what you wanted to add. That is so good. That is really good information. Again, I'm going to put her contact information in the description box so you can hit her up. Okay. That is really good information. So I have two more questions for you and then we're going to play a quick game. Okay. So the first question of the last two is this. First, let me say this. Thank you again so much. This is, no. I mean, awesome nuggets and great tidbits. I've been taking notes. If you couldn't tell, I've been writing stuff down. Uh, so thank you so much for all the information. So here's one question. What does financial freedom look like to you? <laughs> financial freedom to me is... um. For me, it's waking up with no clock. It's waking up on my own terms. Let me say it like that. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, I do have an alarm clock for certain things because there are certain things that I want to do. And sometimes I have to get myself up. But it's really being on my own terms. That is what financial freedom is to me. You know, I don't have a problem doing the work that serves me, the work that I feel is serving other people. So it's not that I have to not work at all, but it's doing what I really love, doing what I want to do, being where I want to be 
when I want to be there. And so for me, you know, financial freedom was something that I I was striving for um, in my previous career as a medical laboratory scientist to where now, you know, I, I get to wake up on my own clock and find out, you know, do the things that I love, be where I want to be, work with who I want to work with. But I think it's just more of having control. That's that's going to be the real mm-hmm. word. The freedom is the control to do whatever it is that um, serves you. And that's what financial freedom does. Um, it just gives you that unlimited. It's just hard because I mean, I, I'm a free, I, I feel like I'm a very free spirited person. The more that I'm starting to understand myself and I'm really big on that. I want to have absolute mm-hmm. control over my own life, regardless of what that is. I want to be the one who made that decision because I chose to, not because I had, I felt forced to, especially not because of a financial situation. Um, So that for me is what I would say financial freedom is to me. It's having ultimate control over your life and your destiny um, and what you want to do. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So now having control over what you uh, want to do. So here is the last question. Or it's not, well, yeah, it's a question. So what are three things that people should do that we should do right now in regard to our finances? I think one of the main things that we have to do in general is really figure out what is it we want out of life? What do you really want? Like get yourself to a place that you're very clear and concise on that, because then from there, that's how you create the plan. But I think a lot of us have got so used to going through the um, everyday cycle, like we're just doing something because that's what we think we're supposed to do to where now you're not truly living how you want to live. You're just like in autopilot. And that's not good. That's not really serving yourself. It might not even be serving your purpose. And so number one, we got to know what it is we truly want. And from there, we start to create. But with that, like I said, number one, you have to get to a place to where you really learn to pay yourself first, meaning you have to save money. You have to get to a place that you make savings a priority. And If you're at a place to where maybe finances are tough and you're like, there's not, I don't have anything extra. Okay. Then you have to find ways to increase your cash flow because you cannot save yourself to wealth. That is, that's not possible. You cannot do that. You have to have enough cash flow coming in for you to create wealth and for you to live the life to where, you know, you're not always struggling. Savings is not going to be the answer because of inflation. Inflation is always going to go up. So the dollar that you save today might only be 50 cents in 10 years. Therefore, that's not helping (laughs) you. Um, So I would say save for sure. Um, I guess if we wanted to go back to the goal setting, I mean, that really, I think is important. But saving money. Um, Number two, if you are in a place that you're wanting to build generational wealth, um, life insurance is the foundation of wealth. We have to understand the value in life insurance. And even though it might be a topic we don't want to talk about and the taboo of it, realize that it's necessary and it's needed. And it does a lot of different things and really just getting educated on that. And so I would say that um, everybody has to have life insurance. Um, And not only that, the last thing I'll say is just get educated. Put yourself in a place, even if a lot of us have not picked up a book since we graduated high school or college, but put yourself in a place where you're at least reading something financial, maybe once a year, start off slow, go to a financial seminar, be in a place that you're always learning and growing because guess what though? Things evolve, things change. What happened or what worked for your grandma and your mom? is not necessarily what's going to work for you and how the world is evolving. So wanting to definitely be up on the times with what is going on, because like I say all the time, um, before I start doing some of my uh, training sessions, if finances and is, if finances is a game, Mm -hmm. how do you expect to win that game if you don't know the rules? And so you have Mm -hmm. to know the rules of money to be able to put yourself in a position that you are getting out of it what you want from it. So that would be what I would say as my main things that everybody has to do 
for sure. Save money, life insurance, and get educated. And I think we're probably going to have to circle back around on another episode about the life insurance. I think it, it needs a whole <laughs> a whole thing by itself. <laughs> right, right. No, so, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So we're going to have to circle back. You're going to have to so just go ahead. Keep in mind that you're coming back. <laughs> so, All righty. Sounds we're, good. We're, so we're going to have to come back to that. That is so all of what you just did was like some really good information. Totally good information. Like seriously, each one of the everything that you talked about could be broken down and have its own thing because it is so right. totally, totally important um, that in order for us, especially, you know, I have to say it, especially for African-Americans, we are so behind mm. on that ball. You know, and we we've got to we've got to get on it in order for our kids to get it. You know, all, right. they all have the opportunity to have the same footing to eat, to play in the game. Right. So we got to get them the rules. We got to teach them, you know, give them the cheat code <laughs> so so they can, you know, get to where they need to be in life. And it's so important important for us to get from early again i really really do appreciate this and then we're going to come back and we're going to do it again and the next thing we probably talk about when you come back is going to be life insurance not probably when you come back we're going to talk about life insurance so y'all get ready for yes. that okay okay now all right <laughs> so really quick we're going to let you baby so <laughs> it is uh one has to go Right. So I'm going to give you like, I think it's like four things in a category and you just say which one got to get up out of there. OK. OK. All righty. So, <laughs> here's the first set. We got Martin, The Cosby Show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or A Different World. Um, mm. Eee, that's tough. Uh, I'm just gonna try to. I'm just gonna use my age as the the and the reasoning. Um, I'm gonna go with, and I still don't know if that's the best one. Um, let me just go. I'll, I'll take out a different world right now. A I'll take world. that one now. <laughs> that was hard, but yeah, I'll take that one out. Even though I like it, but the other ones, I think they're 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 all vital. <laughs> <laughs> they are vital. They are vital. They and you know what? I'm gonna go into the next question, but it's you said something about you were gonna use your age, but isn't that something that each one of those shows, like seriously, they you know, they they pinpoint a point in your life, right? A progression of your life. That is something, okay. Being right, okay. <laughs> next set, here we go. This one for me is tough. I just have to walk away from it. No, no, I I would, I would pick one of these people, okay. But anyway, here we go, Martin. Bernie Mac, Kevin Hart, or Eddie Murphy? For me yeah. personally, <laughs> I can say um, Eddie Murphy go, I think. Really? How old I are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I mean, yeah, we're going to just leave it at that so I don't have to think too hard about it. That's what I'm going to just say. And I think about it. <laughs> Look, that is, that's not the person I want to say. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look, we got to sit. We got to have a movie day. <laughs> hey, we probably do. That's, I was starting to thinking about movies and I was like, nope, I've already said it. It is. You're I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to it. <laughs> okay, here's the last one. One has to go. Jodeci, Drew Hill, Boys to Men, or New Edition. Well, for me, that would be easy one. Just because there's, there's only like one or two songs that I really know from that group. So I can just let New Edition go because of that. But, oh you know, I, that's what I must say. Or it would be, mm, that's so hard. That's the only reason I say that. Because I didn't grow <laughs> up listening to them like that. The other ones, yes. Them, no, but there's still songs that I like. But yeah. I'm like I said, I'm You're, using my age. I'm copping out. Yeah, you are too. <laughs> yes, copping out to help me answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was fun. <laughs> 
thank you so much again. I did. I really enjoyed this. You will definitely be back. Um, again, I'm going to put Terry's contact information in the description box below so that you can contact her uh, with any questions or perhaps you are at a point where you uh, actually need her services in financial planning and all of those things. All right. So as always, thank you so much for joining. Thank you again, Terry, for being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, again, hit the notification bell so you'll know when new episodes are posted. And as always, remember to be just you and be blessed.